Homemade gifts are such a great way to show the people that you work with or your family and friends that you care about them. I'm going to show you how to create this cute little paper purse and I do have it filled with a few goodies. I have a pen here, some chocolate, and a little notepad. All of this comes together really quick and easy and I'm going to show you how to do it. I'm going to start by cutting out the piece I'll need for the body of the purse. I'm using a 12 by 12 sheet here, so if you need to make multiples of these, you can actually get three purse bodies out of one sheet of 12 by 12. And in case you're wondering, this is the Here Comes Santa Claus collection by Echo Park. I feel like I've been using this paper kit forever. I'm going to start by cutting one piece that's four inches wide. Now, if you're using a piece that has a direction to the pattern, the body of the purse is going to wrap this way. So when you cut your four inches, you want to make sure that whatever pattern you're using is going to face up and down, if that makes any sense. So since the purse is going to stand up this way, you want to make sure that your pattern follows that same direction. I cut this down to four inches wide and then I'm just going to cut one inch off to make it four by eleven. Now from my cardstock, this is going to be the base of the purse and also the handles of the purse. I'm going to cut the handles first and these are going to be nine inches. So I'm going to cut nine first. And each handle is going to be uh, one inch wide. So I'm going to cut two strips that are nine by one inch. And then from this piece, for the base of my purse, I need a piece that is three by six. So I'm going to cut my six inch and then my three inch. So you can see here, this is all the cardstock we need to create the purse. We need a pattern piece that's four by 11. We need two handles that are nine by one and then a base piece that's three by four. I need to do a little bit of scoring on my pieces. For my four by 11 piece, I'm gonna put it in on the four inch side and I'm just gonna give it a half an inch score mark the whole way down. And again, this is gonna be the top where we're adding this four inch score mark. So if you're using a pattern, make sure the top of your pattern is on your left side and your half inch score is on the left side also. For the bottom of the purse, the three by six piece of plain cardstock that we cut, I'm just gonna score this at one inch the whole way around. And this cardstock is really thick, so I'm gonna make sure I get that line nice and good. So on all four sides, I'm just gonna come in one inch. Now I know that seems a little funny, <laughs> because it doesn't leave a lot of room in the center, but I promise it makes the perfect size base for a purse. So you can see here, we have one inch the whole way around. And then for the handles, this is a little bit tricky, but it's not too hard. So I'm gonna put my handle in on the narrow side. So I'm just one inch across here. And on my scoreboard, I have measurements that run down this side also. If you don't, you can just make a pencil mark to start. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to line my score tool up at a half an inch, but I'm not going to press down. I'm going to just run it in that track until I get to about the, let me see here, the one and a half inch mark. So right here, I'm in a half an inch this way and I came down about an inch and a half. So now I'm gonna start scoring, but I'm not gonna go the whole way down. I'm only gonna come down to about seven and a half. So let's see if I can turn this so you can see it. So you can see my score mark starts here and it comes down and it ends about here. So I have two pieces on either side that are about an inch and a half in that don't have a score mark. And that'll make sense when I go to put the handles together. So for the second handle, I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna come into the half inch mark. I'm gonna take my score tool down to about half an inch. I'm gonna press in and I'm only gonna come down to about seven and a half. 
which is right about there. If you go a little over, it's okay. It's And you could even score the whole thing if you wanted to, but you're going to see that score line. So that's why I just like to come in about an inch and a half on each end, and I'm only scoring the middle. I want to get the bottom of my purse put together first. So before I start cutting anything, I do want to go ahead and just give the score lines a little bit of a crease so that they can start going in the direction that they're going to go to assemble the base of the purse, which is essentially just an open-sided box. Now that I have my score lines creased a little bit, on the short end of the box, so this is the long end, this is the short end. On the short end, I'm just going to snip right up through that score line until it meets the other score line. And I'm going to do that on both sides of the short end at both score marks. So I got three flaps now going across the bottom of the one short side. So let's do the other short side here. I'm just going to snip straight up until I reach that center score mark. And then I'm going to do the same thing over here. I'm just going to snip up and I'm trying to stay about in the center of the score mark. It doesn't have to be perfect because almost all of this is going to get covered up anyway. It's just to help form the base of our purse. Okay, now that I have those cuts made, I'm going to start with one side. I'm just going to add some glue to one of my tabs. I'm going to fold this side up to meet the center tab. And then I'm going to put some glue on the other tab and fold it over. I know this looks tiny, but this, this works for this size of purse. And all of the things that I'm making today, so again, I'm just going to fold all my flaps in, and it doesn't matter which side goes in first because, like I said, all of this is going to get covered up anyway. Um, all of the things I'm making today are not really original ideas. You know, there's a ton of paper purses on YouTube, all different sizes, all different shapes. Um, some of them are really fancy, like you can almost carry them as a real purse because they have flaps and everything like that. Um, this size purse I made up to fit my needs because I made um, things like this for a craft fair before. So I took the basics that I had learned from paper purses from a bunch of different YouTube videos and put it into this size purse. And then the little things that go inside the purse, um, the little notebook and the little chocolate treat holder, these are things that I've seen all over YouTube, a lot of different creators make things like this for craft fairs also. I know for sure I've seen these little notebooks on um, Lyric Lover Crafts, and I think she also made candy pouches like this, but hers were bigger and longer and more decorated. Um, if I can find any of the videos, I'll link them below, but I just wanted to let you know that these aren't necessarily my original ideas. I just took a bunch of ideas that I found on YouTube and put them all into one thing. Okay, so here's the base of our purse. Now I'm going to get started on my little um, handles for the purse too. Before I do anything on the purse, I do want to round the corners. So I'm using this um, corner puncher from We Are Memory Keepers. And there's a quarter inch side and a half an inch side. I'm just going to use the quarter inch side and I'm just going to round all of the corners on the purse straps here. So I'll just slide it in, give it a little punch and see how it kind of finishes off the, the edges here. And it's easier to do this now before you do anything with the straps. So ask me how I know. <laughs> I've made these straps before and then realized I forgot to corner around them. Okay, so on this score mark that we created here, I'm just going to start the score mark. I just want to get it going kind of, kind of where it needs to go. And like I said, it's only a half an inch or an inch and a half. Um, away from each edge. So I don't want to keep folding. I just want to keep those edges open because those that's how we're going to attach these two to the purse. So again, I'm just going to get the score mark started here. And once I have, have it going in the direction that I need, then I'll go through with my bone folder and get it up to about an inch and a half away from each end. Now for this, I like to use um, double-sided tape. I just think it holds faster than wet adhesive does. 
So I'm going to go ahead and just lay a strip of tape down here just inside those score marks. You don't want to go past those score marks because you don't want adhesive where you don't need it. And this, this um, double-sided tape that I'm using is the score tape. I get it on Amazon, and I always like to buy the 3 8 inch wide, <laughs> which is very specific, I know. But the reason I do that is because a lot of times when I'm doing mini albums and such, I use a lot of half inch flaps for different things. And if you buy half inch double sided tape, it can really take up, you know, a lot of times you get overhang on it and, and that can be a little bit annoying. So that's why I like to buy the 3 8 inch wide because it fits inside of half an inch score marks. And you'll see that better whenever we go to build the body of the purse. Okay, so now we have our straps adhered together in the center. And I'm going to give that a good burnish because I want to make sure that that tape really sticks down. And at this point, I'm going to take my bone folder and I'm just going to start curling this paper. Kind of like you do ribbon curls when you're wrapping presents. I just want to start breaking that paper down a little bit so this handle will start curling and it'll be easier to attach to the purse if it's already curled down a bit. And like I said, this cardstock is rather thick. I couldn't find a pound number on the packaging when I bought it. I got it at Hobby Lobby. They were having a cardstock sale like on their Paper Studio stuff. And I wanted to get black, white, and craft because those are the ones I use the most. And the black and the white packages both said 65 pound, but I couldn't find anything on the craft, so I just picked it up anyway, but it feels pretty heavy. It doesn't feel as heavy as like 110 pound, but it definitely feels heavier than the 65 pound. Okay, so you can see here that our, our handles are nice and curved. I kind of broke the, the fibers in that paper down a good bit. Now for the body of the purse, I really like this snowflake print. I was going back and forth whether I wanted to do the snowflake or the plaid, but I um, I really like the snowflake print, so I'm gonna go with that. So here's my half an inch score mark that I did the whole way down the side. I'm gonna go ahead and get that started and kind of get that in place. And now I'm gonna go through with my double-sided tape here again, and I'm gonna run a piece the whole length right in that half an inch score mark there. And the only reason I'm doing this is to make the top of the purse a little bit thicker and a little bit sturdier. Just because it is going to hold a few things in it and I want to make sure that it's nice and sturdy at the top. So I'm just going to fold that over. Plus it kind of makes it look nice from the inside too to have this folded edge down and how these two papers coordinate. But if you looked on the sample that I showed you, this is just single sided paper. It doesn't have a print on the inside and it looks just as nice. It, it looks nice with that piece folded over. It just gives it a finished look. Okay, now that I have this folded over, I am going to run another strip of double sided tape along the bottom too, but we're not folding this part up. I just need it here so that I have something to attach um, the body of the purse to the base of the pur purse that I created before. And then on one side, it doesn't matter, I'm going to go ahead and do this right side. I'm going to run a piece of double sided tape along this side also. Okay. Now I can get started on attaching this to our base. So what I like to do is I like to peel off some of the backing, but not all of it. I like to just work in small sections. So you can see I peeled away some of my backing and I left the rest of it on. I'm going to start on the long side of the base. It doesn't matter which one, the openings on the top. And I'm going to start my paper at about the center of the long side of the paper. And I'm going to do my best to line the bottom of this body of the purse up with the bottom of the purse base. So I'm just taking my time here. I really want to get this lined up nice and straight before I stick it down. And this is why I said it's easier if you just peel a little bit of that backer off to start 
so you're not getting stuck with other things over here because this is such a long piece. Now before I move on, I am gonna take my bone folder and just give that a little press inside just to make sure that that tape is really stuck. And then as I come around the corners, I'll give it a little pinch as I get around the corner, but I'm not gonna worry about pinching it up the whole way. So now that I'm around a corner, I'll give it a little pinch here, but I wanna keep this part nice and rounded. So I'm only pinching a little bit right here. And now that that side's stuck down, I'm gonna go with my bone photo again and just burnish on the inside, make sure, making sure that that tape is really stuck. And then as I come around again, I can remove this um, tape backing as I go. And as you go, you can adjust it a little bit and just make sure that the bottom of that printed paper is lined up with the bottom base of the purse here. You can do a little pinch on the corner if you want. And I also, I like to keep burnishing as I go. It just makes it a lot easier than trying to get your bone folder in there after the whole thing is put together. Okay, now here's where I'm gonna just pull the rest of that backing off and then I'm gonna go ahead and take this piece of backing off of the, the side piece of tape also. And I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm just coming around the corner on the short side here and I'm just making sure that it stays lined up with the bottom of the base there. Give a little pinch on the corner if you want. We've got one more side to do, but I'm gonna go ahead and get my bone folder in there and make sure that that's nice and burnished down. And then when we come back around, if you take your time and make sure that everything stays lined up on the bottom there, everything should line up as you come around, get everything lined up. And because we put that tape here, we can just slide all of that down in place. Now that the body of our purse is all in, I'm gonna go ahead and make sure that backside's all nice and burnished down. And I'm also gonna make sure that I come up the seam here where I had that double-sided tape. So that's the body of our purse. You can see it's nice and rounded around the top here. And then I know it didn't make sense in the beginning why this was so small, but that's what helps give it that um, a little bit of a fan shape. It's not a complete rectangle. It doesn't look so boxy. And because this is so small, this can stay nice and rounded on the top here. I like to use double-sided tape and a stapler to attach my purse handles because they're, they're a little bit of an awkward angle. I just think it's better to have kind of a backup adhesive. <laughs> so I use the double-sided tape and then I use my tiny attacher from Tim Holtz to attach the, the purse handles. So I add a little bit of double-sided tape to the inside. You can see this is where we folded it here. So this is the inside. I got my little bit of double-sided tape in there. You probably could use hot glue for this part too. I've just never tried it. And when I curled my purse handles, this is how I want them to stay. So make sure you don't twist them or anything like this. When you curl it like this, this is how it's gonna stay. I took the backing off of one piece of the double-sided tape and I'm just gonna lay my handle down over the body of my purse. And I'm gonna go in with my tiny attacher and give it a little staple right there in the center. Like I said, I think you could use hot glue. I just have found that this is the better way for me. It seems to really hold up well. I kind of got the backup system here. And then, like I said, on the second one, you wanna make sure you don't twist that purse handle or anything. You wanna keep it going in the same direction and just do your best to line it up with the other one. If it's not perfect, it's okay. And then give it a little staple and then you'll repeat that on the back side as well. Now for this part, I am gonna use a little bit of hot glue, so I'm just gonna add a dot of hot glue right over top of each of those staples, and I have these tiny little gold flat back. They almost look like buttons. Um, they're just little flat back embellishments. I've had these in my stash forever. So I'm just gonna place those to hide the staples and to give it a little bit of extra fanciness. And I'm gonna do that on the back side too. Here's my little purse all put together. And this is where you can decide what all you wanna put inside your purse. I'm gonna show you a few little goodies that I learned how to make off of other YouTubers that I wanted to put inside of my purse. So I'm sticking with that same 
pattern paper that I used for the purse body, but now I think I'm going to use the plaid and I'm going to cover one of these little mini composition books. Now, as much as I love the Dollar Tree, I will tell you that you can find these cheaper at Walmart and Dollar General than what you can at the Dollar Tree. I think this was a four pack that I got at Walmart for, I want to say $1.12. I think for a four pack. So, and the Dollar Tree, it's a three pack for a dollar twenty-five. I'm gonna go ahead and when I cover mine, I like to leave the binding that's already on the notebook there. I don't like to cover that up. So I would encourage you to measure yours first. I'll give you the measurements that'll cover this one, but they all are a little bit different. So it's just better if you go ahead and make your own measurements. The front of mine from where this binding stops until the edge of the notebook is about two and a half inches. And I wanna double that because I wanna wrap it around the cover. So I'm gonna make sure that I have a piece that's five inches wide. And my little notebook here is four and a half inches tall. So I'm gonna need a piece that's five inches wide by four and a half inches tall. And I'm actually gonna need two pieces like that because I wanna cover the front and back cover of mine. If you only wanna do the front, that's okay too. You can go ahead and just cut out one piece. Or if you have scrap pieces, this is a great way to use up a lot of your scraps. So I'm gonna go ahead and cut two pieces at five by four and a half for the cover of my notebook. I'm not gonna score these or anything. I'm just gonna kind of use the notebook as my guide as to where they'll need to fold over to flap towards the inside. I do like to use my double-sided tape here and I'm gonna start at the top and I'm gonna run right up against that binding that's already on the notebook. I probably should have picked a different color notebook to do this with so that you could see it a little bit better because it's hard to see the black binding on the black notebook. I'm also going to run a little piece of the double-sided tape right on this edge too because that's where it's going to get the most wear and tear. So I want to make sure it's really adhered down here. I'm not going to worry about the inside just yet. Let me go ahead and get my backers cut off or not cut off <laughs> you know what I mean I'm trying to peel off the backers here I am going to run just a little bit of wet glue through the center here I don't need a ton and I am going to make sure that I have a little bit of wet glue on the corners there too and you'll see why here in a minute all right now with my piece I want to make sure I'm getting the four and a half inch side going up and down because four and a half by five it's kind of hard to tell the the top and bottom there sometimes so I'm going to line everything up as best as I can with the top and along this side binding here let me go ahead give this a burnish make sure it's all adhered down in that wet glue and on those um on those corners too, just be careful. You don't want to rip your paper, so just give that a little press with your fingers there. All right, now that we have that in, oh, and this is also where you want to make sure if you're using a pattern with a direction that you have the top of the notebook <laughs> and you have the pattern going the right way. All right, now I'm just going to run my bone folder along the edge of the notebook here just to help give that a little bit of a crease so that when I lift this paper up, it kind of knows where it needs to go. I'm not going to fold it the whole way in yet. I'm just going to work it with my hand a little bit. Then I'm going to come through with the flat edge of my bone folder and just run it along there so that it really knows that it needs to wrap around that edge. Okay, now I can wrap this in the whole way, give it a little crease, and I'm just going to use wet glue for this part. I'm going to make sure I get a little bit over those corners, and then I'm just going to cover all of this with some wet glue. Fold that back in place and give it a good press. There. I'm going to let this dry for a second while I work on the back side. And for the back, I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to use my double sided adhesive and I'm going to work it around the cover the same way I did on the front. 
All right, this gave my, my front cover a little bit of time to dry while I got that back cover worked in. And you can see it just gives it a nice little decorative touch on the inside too. I didn't want the paper to go the whole way into the binding here because if you get it too close, um, you run the risk of not being able to close your notebook. So that's why I left a little bit of a gap there. You can always decorate that up too. If that's too much of a gap for you, you can always decorate that a little bit with um, some stickers or another piece of pattern paper. Now you can see here on the paper of the notebook that it does have rounded corners. And I can tell you on my quarter inch and my half inch side, neither one of these are exact to how it was rounded, but the quarter of an inch side looks the best. And that's why I really wanted to make sure that I got glue into those corners because I want to make sure that those two stay sealed together and this will hold up over time. Rounding the corners will make it a little bit more durable than if the corners were just square. So here, let me open a few pages. You can see it's not the exact same corner, but if you would use the half an inch corner rounder rather than the quarter of an inch, you would be able to see some of that um, white notebook paper at the very corner. So that's why I like to do just the quarter of an inch because even though it's not quite as rounded as the inside of the notebook, at least you don't see any of that paper from the front there. Now I'm gonna keep the decorating on mine simple. On this one that I had made for my other purse, I just cut out another piece of cardstock. I rounded the corners and then I did a white piece of cardstock in the middle to kind of give it that composition book look. Like you know how they have the, the little area on the front where you can write what subject it is. But for the, this one, instead of doing a label, I'm gonna go back to that sticker sheet that came with my paper pack and I'm just gonna pick out a cute sticker for the front of mine notebook. So the other thing I wanted to show you real quick too, if this little gap here on the inside of the covers bother you, that's a good place to use up these border stickers that usually come with these paper packs and these sticker sheets. They always have one or two of these little sticker borders and that would be a great place to fill that in. So let me look at my stickers here. I got a lot of green on this. Oh yeah, I want to use this Santa. I think he's so cute. <laughs> So I definitely want to use this Santa. Uh, do I want to do a little saying? Let me see. Actually, no. You know, I think I might... I don't know if this is going to be too big. Let me see. This little corner. Maybe I can fit this in with my Santa. No, I don't think I want to use that. Let me know in the comments, like, do you always have a dilemma when you're trying to pick out stickers? I really like the Santa. I kind of want him in the corner, but I kind of feel maybe he needs some kind of saying to go along with him. But I'm not really... Oh, look at this Santa on the skis. <laughs> oh my gosh, these are so cute. <laughs> oh, I just don't know what to use. Maybe, oh, there's a little one here that says Christmas cheer. Way down at the bottom. Maybe I'll use that. Let's see. Do I want it coming out? Yeah, let's do it coming out from the side of Santa here. So I'm just going to stick stick my Santa on top of the, the little Christmas cheer. Okay, maybe I'll have to stick these down separate. All right, let me put Santa where I want him. I want him in this bottom corner, but I'm only going to stick him down on the right side so I can get this little Christmas cheer coming out of the side of him here. There we go. Oh, that's cute. When I do little notebooks like this, I don't like to put a ton of embellishments that are going to be too thick on the front. Um, I usually I stick with stickers or little journal cards or something like that because when you open this to write, you don't want a lot of beads and pearls and bows and whatnot on here because it, it'll get bulky on the side when you go to write. Okay, so there's our little notebook. I think I'm going to leave it at that. I like just the little, the little Santa and he has little Christmas cheer coming out the side there and I think those work really well with this paper too. So we're going to let that go like that for now. 
For the little chocolates that I created for this purse, you really only need a few scraps of paper for this. And you can see I have a couple scraps coming out of this collection. And the chocolates that are in there are these little Hershey Nuggets. These are the perfect size. I love these. They're really cute and they're easy to wrap and package up for things like this. And you only need a couple scraps of paper for the chocolates themselves and for the little tray that they come in. I'm going to start... I think I'm going to use, let me see, I don't want to use this, like this is too big of a print when I cut those down for the wrappers. Oh, this would be cute though. I think you'd be able to see this. Okay, I'm going to use this scrap for the wrappers and then I think I'm going to use this for the tray. So for the little tray that they sit in, I'll need to cut a piece that is five and a quarter by two and a half. So I'm going to cut my five and a quarter, two and a half. We'll set that aside. And then I'm going to put five little Hershey nuggets in mine. And I need pieces to wrap this that are one inch by three inches. And I don't think this piece is quite three inches wide. All right, I switched directions a little bit here and I'm gonna change up what I use for the wrappers. And for each of the wrappers, you're gonna need pieces that are three inches by one inch. And I usually like to do um, alternating colors when I do mine. And I'm gonna use five of the little Hershey Nuggets. So I'll need three of one pattern and two of the other. So there's one. two, and let's do one more out of this one, three. And then for the other two pieces, I should have enough out of here. So I'm going to do, is this two inches wide? Yeah. So I'm going to do a three inch piece, and then I'm going to cut this down to one, and I'll need two of these. So one inch and oh just barely made it with that one and one inch okay so here's the five pieces that I need to wrap my little nuggets now for my nuggets I don't need any kind of super strong adhesive so I just like to use my tape runner um, and I run just a little bit of tape across the back of the nugget I lay my uh, little wrapper piece on that. I'm going to add a little bit more tape runner across the top of that and then I'll just wrap this the whole way around and ad adhere it down. I wouldn't bother using any kind of wet glue or super strong double-sided tape here because it's just going to get <laughs> ripped open and eaten anyway, right? <laughs> Don't waste any of your expensive adhesive on this. It's not worth it. It's going to get tore into. <laughs> That's how everybody treats chocolate, right? <laughs> and like I said, I did three pieces of one pattern and two of the other. So I'm going to go ahead and get these all finished, wrapped up. See how cute those all are laid out. That's why I like to use the two different patterns. It just kind of changes it up a little bit. And I love that these nuggets have a foil wrapper on them and it just sticks out a little bit on each side. I just think that makes it look so cute. For the tray that I'm going to make to hold all of the nuggets, this is that piece that is two and a half by five and a quarter inches. I'm just going to score this at a half an inch on each side. So however that's easiest for you. And since this piece is actually one of the wrappers that I used, you're not going to see the inside of the tray so much. So I want to make sure that the outside of the tray is this green plaid. So I'm going to score on this side. Now everybody's a little bit different. If you're right-handed, it's probably a little bit hard for you to score at a half an inch on this side. So you could score just at two inches on this side, but you want to make sure that you do it on both sides. So I'm just going to score it a half an inch on either side. And before I fold those up, I am going to take my corner rounder again on the quarter inch side, and I'm just going to give a nice rounded edge to each of these corners. And like I said, I want the green plaid to be on the outside because you will be able to see that a little bit. You won't see the inside so much. 
I'm just going to fold both of these sides up, give it a little crease. And again, because this is going to get taken apart and eaten, I don't want to use any kind of strong adhesive on the inside here. So I'm just going to run two lines of my tape runner down. And I'm just going to start at the bottom here. I'm going to line this nugget up on the inside of the tray and press that one in. And then I'll just keep going up from there. I'm just going to get them all pressed in. They don't have to be stuck down too tight or anything because... This isn't meant to be permanent anyway. And then there's our little nugget tray all ready to go inside our purse. I like to slide my nugget tray inside one of these clear bags. It just helps hold all of the candy in place. So I start with the opening um, facing me and I slip it in backwards so that the flap will be on the back side of the nugget. So I'm just gonna work it down towards the top there and then I'll fold my little clear bag over and there's a, a little self-adhesive strip on there. I just think it makes, a look, makes it look a lot more professional that way. You could leave room for a topper if you want to, but since I'm sticking this in the purse, I just wanted it closed up in the clear bags. And there's all different size clear bags that you can find on Amazon, or there's even a website called clearbags.com where you can find pretty much any size clear bag that you want. I'm not going to put the notepad in a clear bag. I just don't think that that's necessary. And I think the only other thing that I'm going to add to my little purse is just a pen. I don't really have any fancy fancy pens on hand. I'm hoping that um, I can find some cute Christmas pens or something like that. But if you want to fancy up your little pen, you could just tie a ribbon on it or something like that. Now for the purse that I created just for every day, I did go ahead and just cut a little tag out of some crap uh, scrap cardstock and I stamped to and from on the back. But since this is a Christmas one, I figured it just made more sense to use a regular Christmas tag, right? So I dug through my little stash of gift wrap things and I did find this little set of gift tags. I think these are from, yeah, this is Recollection. So this is from Michaels. I have no idea when I got these though, but I thought this worked out perfect for this bag because it's a snowflake like we have on the pattern here and it's a craft background. So it goes with the purse handles too. So I'm just going to take a little piece of Baker's twine. I have, this is a, a gray and white Baker's twine and I'm just going to feed that through my snowflake and tie it onto my purse handle. I'm not going to stamp to and from on this one. I think I'll just hand write that on. But you can see here, I folded my twine in half, and there's a nice big hole at the top of this snowflake, so I can just get that through easy. I'll pull my tails through, and then I'm just going to tie it on to my purse handle here. I don't want to tie it too tight. I do, I do want it to hang down a bit because it's not too large, so it'll be okay if it hangs down. And I think that looks cute, and it kind of makes it look more like a real purse. You know how when you buy a purse, there's always a little, you know, tag hanging from it to tell you what brand it is or whatever. So I think this is really cute. I think it kind of makes it look more, more like a real purse. All right, here's our little finished purse with our snowflake tag. We got the body of the purse. I got just a simple pen in there because I don't have a fancy one to put in yet. We have our little chocolates and of course we have our fun little notepad. You can fill this with anything you'd like. You don't even have to make the goodies that go in it. You could buy just little notepads or chocolates, teas, treats, you know, whatever you want to stick in there, whatever would work for you. This would always, this would be a good place to put in like a little hand lotion or like a chapstick, anything like that. I did make these one year for a craft fair. Um, it was actually for the elementary school that my mom used to teach at. She's retired now, but they always did a Santa shop for the kids to buy gifts for their families and stuff. So I made a bunch of these when I set up at that craft fair and I had put in a uh, a notepad like this, a pen, and I think I had put in either a pack of gum or a little pack of mints. I can't remember, but I completely sold out of these. Those little girls, when they came around, they were so excited to see these. I think some of them bought them for themselves. 
<laughs> even though they were supposed to be buying gifts for their, you know, friends and family. Um, but they just went nuts for these. I ended up selling out of these. So this is a great fit craft fair item. And because the body of the purse was only four inches, if you're using 12 by 12 cardstock, you could get three bodies out of one piece of cardstock. And then the rest of these little things are great scrap busters. If you have little leftover pieces, that's a great way to use up your scraps. Let me know in the comments what kind of goodies would you put in this purse if you decided to make one. All right, everyone. I hope you have a great week and I'll talk to you in the next one.